I got you. A little spin of Roonies. We'll take, we'll take. Four, one or five, oh, they from flip side, or sorry, precision. All right, we're pretty much at the beginning. Try to follow that up. He is, he's a long-legged individual. Marky. Mm. Why did I choose to eat noodles on a face cam? It is impossible to eat pot noodle with dignity. It's impossible. I should just turn off the face cam, but I know that you guys will complain, so... Oh dear. Like, how am I supposed to eat this without making it an absolute mess? Oh dear. Great team play by Marky and Mike. Getting in each other's way very well. Marky's six foot three. He's six foot three, and I'm just over six foot. So he's a bit taller than me. But Marky's flatmate's like five foot seven or something. So when we're hanging out, and Marky's other friend Thomas is six foot six. So when whenever we were hanging out in Glasgow together, Thomas or Jack rather, Marky's flatmate was just like, "Why do you guys have to be so tall?" Because <laughs> he's walking about like just looking up at us all. But Thomas, Marky's friend, is a giant. It's absolutely huge, six foot six or something. Now there was no interview between Precision and Flipside because Precision didn't want to do one. These boys are all very shy. I think Mikageshi used to pretend to be a girl in Sarp, if I'm not mistaken. That would be an interesting interview. But uh, that's just, uh, it might just be hearsay. I don't know if that's true. Oh dear. Oh, try not to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, good night, Magnage. It's not worth the commitment. It wasn't going to result in anything good. And he backed off instead. And he was able to get a counter hit to keep it in the precision half. Touch from Cooks here goes out to the do. He tries to take advantage. Doesn't go on target. Goes a little bit wide. But I challenge anybody to eat pot noodle with dignity. This is so difficult. Takes that back off the wall. Shot on target, but Nikageshi is there. Easy clear to midfield. Mike reading that one off the wall. You prefer the name Skyline? Yeah, same. Skyline was a great name. I don't know why he changed his name to Mikageshi. Well, I actually I do know it's because he's a weeaboo. Yeah, I could have muted the sneeze, but I thought nah. I actually did mute, then I unmuted again. I I, I went mute, nah, unmute, and then I sneezed in the microphone. See, that was the redirect out of defense. That was good. Mike just did a weak clear and soft soft uh, soft cleared it, and then Cux popped it on. Took two people out of the game actually with a cheeky Marky, pop. Mike and flips. Flipside. Cooks here. Now have Marky, Mike and Flipside. Flipside 97. Good one. What was a good one? Analysis of Skyline's body pillow. There's something I don't want to see. As they tried there, but it's back into their area, and now they're going to have to fight on the defensive side of things as Mike tries to set up a play off the backboard. Mikageshi, good job rushing out to that ball, getting up before anyone could... Why not just use as much liquid in the first place? Liquid? What are you guys on about? Oh, well. Never mind. Dudu. Dudu and Marky Duda. Marky Dadu. The sneeze was good, thanks man. I tried. I tried to make it as good as possible. Good save. It's a good save by Tequilas. It's exactly what they have to do. Uh, Mike could have faked that. That would have been hilarious if he just faked. I bet the whole team would have jumped past him and been like, sup. <laughs> You're making pot noodles? I've inspired you. 
Both teams have to be careful. While it may seem like it's been in the side of precision a little bit. And then you can try and make less of a mess than I have. What does Duda mean? It doesn't mean anything, it's just a silly word. Marky's name in the old game was Dappy Duda, which is just silly. Uh, and then he put Marky in there for Rocket League, which is his real name, Mark, of course. Very smart. It was headed towards his half. He probably yeah. should have not gotten underneath that. He yeah, the Duda. It's like a thingy. It's just a silly word. It's like a Scottish word for thing. It's like, oh yeah, that that thing over there, that Duda over there. Pass the Duda. Can you get give me a, can you give me that Duda over there? Just you know, it's just a silly Scottish word. Where, oh, do you do you remember? Do you can where I put the doodah? The uh, you know the 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 doodah, the, the the screwdriver. <laughs> That's what I'd expect to hear it. Just people like looking for a tool in a building site. It's like oh, but I've lost uh, what do you call it again? I've lost my my doodah, my hammer. Yeah, I've got chicken and mushroom. Chicken and mushroom pot noodle. It's the best one. It's the best one. I would have liked to see Cuck slow down that play, kind of made himself in a risky position by hitting it so far up the wall and got done. If he slowed it down, then he would have given Mike and Mark more time to recover. It didn't turn out too bad though, like it's not like he did a stupidly heavy touch, it was just a little bit too heavy. Oof. Another shot. The shots is coming out right now. The scary spot to be in. Cooks is putting this much pressure on. Now the shot from Mike. He can't get it. Back to the side it goes. I want to see the saves at the end of this. So I know why F3 didn't do Rocket Royale. I know that Marky was in Glasgow seeing his girlfriend, so he couldn't play. And I guess they couldn't get a sub, or they just didn't feel like it. Probably. Excuse me. The yeah, Marky was in Glasgow, seeing his girlfriend, so he couldn't go. He wasn't there for the group stage, and they missed the group stage entirely, so they didn't qualify for the knockouts or the finals. Well, I say Marky was in Glasgow seeing his girlfriend. He was really seeing me. I actually did go and get some food with him, catch up. We went to some. What was the restaurant again? <laughs> then his girlfriend came and joined us. Then we were like, okay, now be gone. Be gone, Marky's girlfriend. Leave us in peace. So she went away. I'm his girlfriend? Yeah, pretty much. Bipod sucked that day. I don't think Bipod played for them that day. Bipod's a good player, he's very good. When he, when he switches to PC, I'm sure he'll get better as well. How do these dudes fly so effortlessly? Just practice. But it looks like they got things sorted out. The, As we go the good old game two, pinch clear attempt by Cooks and Marky right there. The not sure if it was organized or not. It's good passing goal. Well done. So strong. This is exactly what I want to see out of him. This pass from Cooks here. It's a great it's touch by Marky. Wow. That's a really good touch. How is the pot noodle? The pot noodle is great. It really hit the spot. It was perfect. It's exactly what I needed to sustain me. No, I don't think Gambit's name in Sarp was Gambit. I don't remember, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't Gambit. But yeah, it wasn't Gambit. I always felt like when I saw videos of Gambit way back in the beginning of Rocket League when I first started playing and I saw all these videos of people playing Gambit and Gambit was just like this mysterious good player that people kept on uploading videos of them barely beating him. And I was like, he must be good if everybody's like proud of beating this guy. 
And I figured he'd be like, I don't know, some, some old man, just an old, like, monk who got really good at a car game. Do I really think the EU Dream Team is all three a flip side? Yeah, individually, yep. Like, the whole point of a Dream Team is to pick star players. Just absolute raw talent. And that's what flip side are. They're just the best three players. But as a team, they don't work as well together as we damn girls do. They don't rotate as cleanly. They... Um... They're not as stable and consistent. They don't work as hard. They don't play as many tournaments. But as far as individual skill goes, Flipside are the three best players in Europe, probably. The only player who could, or the only players you could throw into that category with them is maybe Scrub Killer and Pashi, in my opinion. But Weedem girls are really, really, really close. Really close. And as a team, they are the best right now. Oh, what a waste, oh goodness sake. <laughs> That's such bad defending after a terrible first touch by Tequilas. Oh, Mike's sideways. Yeah, like Mike's either got a shadow or attack the ball. By turning sideways and then like being really slow, he just gave Tequilas the perfect time to outplay him. Like, Mike attacked the ball at the only moment where Tequilas could put it past him, pretty much. If he attacked earlier, he could have met Tequilas and 50 50 him before the ball bounced. Or if he waited a bit longer, he could have intercepted the redirect. Or not the redirect, I mean the. He could have inter intercepted the dribble. Look at me out. Even I'm using redirects when I shouldn't. But he just attacked the ball right, right after uh, Tequilas was about to go in field with the dribble. Just bad timing. And the touch, I don't think it was even that good or necessary. I think Tequila should have just smashed it. Just wait for the bounce and absolutely leather the ball into the top of the net from there. And Mike's not going to save it most of the time. Unless he makes a crazy prediction save. Can you have some noodles? Uh, nah. They're mine. Marky. Almost getting a pass that attacker doesn't quite back to midfield. Cooks here has the dribble opportunity. Gets the oh ball. my. Okay, that's a terrible play by Marky, but great pass by Cux. You know, now that I think about it, flip side don't match up against PZ as well as. Oh, what was that? As well as We Dim Girls or Market do? Especially Weedem Girls. I think Weedem Girls against Precision Z is like a really big stylistic mismatch. And if Weedem Girls are playing well, they'll just dominate. Hmm. Like, the way to beat PZ is to do what they just did there. Set up a shot with a, a pass. You've got to pass the ball or hit the backboard and rebound to beat PZ because they're very good in the goal as we saw in game one. And they like sitting back and defending and counter-attacking. So you've got to be careful moving forward. Do I think Zumi and Sweaty are underrated in the pro scene? Zumi has big issues with regards mentality and tilt. Oh, what a play by Marky. That was a good fake before as well. Uh, but no, Sweaty Mix, I don't think he's underrated. I think he's a smurfer. So he's probably rated about where he should be. If he's not a smurfer, then I apologize, but I've heard that he is. By people who I trust. Why do you suck? I'll, I'll, I'll answer I'll get right into that in a minute. Hold on. Zoomy Tail, though. Um, used to play in a team with Flarky, who I'm good friends with. And I listened into their team comms. Oh, dear. So... Reasons for leaving a goalkeeper on kickoff. 
They could get even Number one, if they do that again. you might just get scored on if you're cheeky and you cheat up like this. If this happens again, we're going to be down in two seconds. And so they have four holes uh, but what was I saying? It was a nice, nice handstand as well by Tequilas at the end there. It's noteworthy. But uh, yeah, Zumi, I listened into their team comms. If that team, which was Galactic Lions, if they ever lost a game in a series, they were pretty much just done. Because Flarky was the only person who was vocal and positive and trying to make a comeback happen. And even he has small issues with emotion, getting emotional in games and struggling to make... Uh, well, just struggling to believe in himself sometimes. Um, which I've been trying to work, help him with. But he's a great player. I love Flarky. Great guy. Very underrated player. But um, Zumi and Detton, who were the other two members of that team, were very tilty. And they would just fall behind and tilt off the face of the universe. Uh, but Sis, Sis Doe, for those of you who don't know, is Amoni's teammate. Amoni's teammate, Sis. Probably the best player in his team, in my opinion. And I'd say Matt is comfortably the second best player. Amoni, solid sometimes, a bit unreliable sometimes. Um, definitely needs to practice if he wants to get up to the an adequate level to compete with the with Sis and Matt on a higher, against better competition. What's up, Jay? I'm not. How you doing? Yeah, but yeah I don't think game money's there yet. Truthfully, I don't think he's there. I just don't think he's practiced enough threes. Like he just mispositions and panics a lot and doesn't hit the ball very well sometimes. Um, but that's that's not exactly the question that was asked. Yeah, the question was a bit of a joke. Says just asking why does his team suck? His team doesn't suck. They perform very well. They performed very well qualifying for the group stage and took some games off some big teams. Nobody's attacking that ball when Cux is aerialing. Nobody's attacking it when it rebounds off the wall. Nobody's attacking it when Mike's in the air. It's obvious that something has gone wrong in the defensive rotation from PZ right there. Thoughts on your playstyle heroics? Uh, I can't really. I'm sorry. I watched so much Rocket League. It's hard to remember like specific things about certain players. So I don't really know. I've seen you play a fair bit. I'd say you could definitely play more grounded and patient, from what I remember. I mean, I'd say that about most American players, though. Just they need to learn how to play more grounded and patient, and uh, just work on their. Just work on their ability to, um, I don't know, just control the ball and not give away possession. It's one of the biggest things for American Rocket League, just not giving away possession meaninglessly. As I get some noodles on my face. This is why you don't eat on a face cam, especially not eating noodles on a face cam. Thoughts on Scrub Killer, one of the best players in the world. He lost a bit of motivation to play because he couldn't play in the RLCS, which is understandable, because when he couldn't play in the RLCS and everybody else in Rocket League is playing in the RLCS, that sucks, and I, I really feel bad for him, but he's got a big future ahead of him in, in the game. I hope his streaming career goes well, I'm trying to help him out with that. I hope that he, you know, gets a, to make a good name for himself, and I'll be helping him as much as I can, because uh, he is my countryman, and, uh, you know, I, I think I can help him just be a good influence on him because obviously he is young and impressionable. Which, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad influences <laughs> in the Rocket League scene. Well, I'm sure that uh, Mike and Mark, just in, in response to a question that has probably disappeared off the screen now, I'm sure that Mike and Mark do wish uh, Cux would speak, but I've heard Mike and Mark both say multiple times that what Cux brings to the pitch far outweighs the problems that they have. Which is true, like, Cux, replacing Cux on F3 would be almost impossible. 
and no one to follow it up. That was a close, close shave. Oh my goodness, what a save. There we go. Good interception by Cux, though. Uh, so yeah, Cux is a, is a beast, and he is starting to talk a bit more, if I if he, if I have been informed correctly. Although Cux, he said today in chat that he was speaking in some of these games, so that's good to hear. I think moving into LAN finals, that'll be a big thing as well. Because even if he's not speaking a lot, just speaking a little bit, could make a big difference. Not the best pass by Mike there, he just arced it high and Marky couldn't get in the end of it. Should have probably just slammed it in low. <coughs> yeah, well, A Money's the most popular player on his team, so of course every mistake that his teammates make is going to be exaggerated by the chat. But the truth is that A Money is outclassed by Matt and Says, and uh, although they can all improve individually and as a team, A Money is definitely the weakest link at the moment. Your team is okay, you feel like you have to, too many problems to be able to compete at the top level. Usually you start off your first game well, then just get crushed the rest of the day. Is that on you guys? You just kind of fall off? Says, like, do you fall apart mentally, just not believe in yourselves, or is it more of an issue of just not being able to play to a consistently high level? You're definitely a worthy group stage team, says. I can't think of any team that didn't make the groups who had put in ahead of you guys. You're definitely, definitely a good team who deserved to qualify. <laughs> and yeah, no problem. I'm scrolling through the chat a little bit behind because I've been paying attention to the game right here. Yeah, PZ just being far too aggressive there on a bad chance. Will I be at the LAN? I hope so. I hope to go regardless of whether or not I'm casting or doing anything as, a, as an, like an official whatever. I just want to be there because it'll be awesome. And yeah, Cox doesn't need to speak like a hundred words a minute. I feel like he just needs to say smell smell things. Like he's got it, no boost. Oh, what a finish! Mika's very good at shooting, I have to say. And that's not an easy shot right there. Not an easy shot. I think it took Mike by surprise. Darkfire. You're, yeah, I've seen you play. What? Who did you used to play with? Didn't you used to play with Matt and Timothy or something? What, what team are you on, Darkfire? Because when I saw you play, I thought you were the you were playing very well for some team. I don't remember what team it was. Was it Matt? Darkfire? Timothy? Or have I made that up? Did that nearly get dunked in by an own, for an own goal? I mean, I'm sure Amani can get there, because he clearly has a good work ethic with regards to streaming, and he can apply that work ethic to, um, to self-improvement. And his mentality is pretty good, I think. I don't think he tilts or causes other people in his team to tilt, which is important. Like, that's the two key things, really, to to improve as a team, is just to have a positive mindset and good work ethic. Having natural talent is also pretty useful, obviously. Remember, this is we play every single game because every point matters. Every game is a point. So they precision team needs. Sorry, I didn't say anything about Vex. All right, well we'll find out as all the players are ready and excited to get into the next match. Chill it down. RL Matt, Johnny Boy, in your opinion, what should I work on to improve the most based on what you saw in RLCS? I'd echo what I said to Sis. Just try and play more grounded and more efficient. 
Sometimes the best way to create a chance on net is not to go up a wall or to take the ball into the air. Just uh, play it on the ground. That's what you see the best teams in EU doing. Just go for ground, ground passes, infield passes. Uh, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to be in the air to get a goal. Something uh, pretty much, I'd say this to pretty much any NA team that's asking me how can we improve. I'd say just play more grounded. Uh, just control the possession more. Don't give away the ball needlessly. Like right here, we just see failure for Precision Z to control the ball in around their net, which uh, Mika failing on a hit right there, and then not getting a good clear. Just not, just not clearing the ball to safety. But if they can at that point just get the ball into their corner and look to control it, they'll be much more better off. Um, but I will, I will admit, I've not seen a lot of um, selfless play together, so my uh, my advice to you is quite general. But I think you can definitely benefit from listening to it, because grounded play is the way forward for NA teams. Grounded play and efficient use of possession. Just don't give away the ball for no reason. If you can go through an entire game without giving up possession uh, for no reason, then you'll be doing great. I'm assuming someone on a team's like... You got time. That's one of the and yeah, you got to trust your teammates as well. I see says commenting saying that he starts making solo plays, and um, just not trusting each other as the series goes on, just going for more solo things. Yeah, you've got to trust each other. If your teammate says that they've got it, you just got to trust them. Unless you can see information that they can't. Like if you're at the back of your team. Oh. <laughs> Did, did Mika like... What was this? Something weird happened. Oh no, it's off the screen! No! Yeah, Mike and... I think Mike, Micah, Micah, Mike and Mika bumped each other. I wanted to see it. But like I was saying... Um, or what was I saying? Flip. I've forgotten. Oops. Forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, if you're at the back and you can see your, both your teammates in front of you, you should be communicating more because you've got more information than they do. And if you're at the front, you should just be listening uh, most of the time. Anything you can do as a community to help your chances of streaming at the LAN? Well, I mean... Well, streaming at the LAN, you mean like casting or something? Well, I mean... Uh, I, I guess just, you know, watch my streams, follow me on social media, and uh, give me positive feedback or cr constructive criticism. I'm always open ears and eyes to anything that people have to say about me. Darkfire, you played in Lucky Bounce. Yeah, I think you played very well for that team. I was very impressed. Why did Cuxer switch him up to Batmobile? Because he is Batman. That's why he doesn't talk, because it it would, his cover would be blown. Like, I got it! Oh, that's a terrible aerial. Wait a minute. Holy cow, if he meant to do this, he's a god. If Mike meant to do this, he's a god. I was like, what an awful shot. But then suddenly it's like the best pass of all time. I take it all back. I take it all back. This is unbelievable for Mike. Was Cux even in the shot? Yeah, see, so you can't even see Cux in the autocam. Holy cow. If that's a deliberate pass... Like, I'll, I'll be honest, it didn't look like one, but then right at the end it did. I think, I don't know, if he meant to do that, then that is incredible passing by Mike. That's incredible to go for that pass over to shot. I couldn't even see Cux in the screen, I was like, wait, that was a rubber shot. Holy cow, what a pass. I'm trying to catch up in the chat, I'm scrolling down. But yeah, when you're in solo queue, people are really impatient in threes. They just tackle teammates and stuff and go for... Do they just hit away the possession and then get pressured for no reason because they just keep giving away possession. That was a ridiculous goal by Mike and Cux, though. 
just drops that to the side to stop any play from developing. Like, notice what Flipside are doing there. They're controlling the ball in their corner, and then they're dribbling it out of defense, because if anybody hits it there, it's just going to be a soft clear, and a soft clear usually turns into a pass to the opposition, gives away possession. But you'll see Flipside love to slow it down and control the possession like this. They're not panicking, they're not hitting the ball away, they're just controlling it, keeping it close to them, just spacing the ball really, really well. Which, a lot of players in that corner, if, like, Marky was in, they would have just panicked and just flipped at the ball and the ball would have gone up the wall and a defender would have come and he cleared it. Like, that right there from, from Mike wasn't very good. Mike just giving away possession right there after I, you know, credit them for being so good at keeping it. My favorite caster for knowledge, jokes, etc. Uh, probably Findable Carpet. I love casting with Carpet. We've known each other since before either of us were casters, or before either of us even had like a hundred followers on Twitch. Like, we both, we both bumped into each other. Oh, this goal! I saw this. Beautiful. There you go. Wow, it's a tie game. Oh, man. He gets that second touch. He gets up underneath. He gets the third touch just in time. The defender came up. Got a yeah. Little page and wasn't ready for it. Defender but not seeing that last touch. You have to know he's going to do it. Well played by Marky, though. He had the room. He needed to be contested just a little bit sooner. But, man, that is that is hard to read no matter what, how good of a defender you are. Incredible play from Marky Duda. Putting that up, up a goal. But we have seen a lot of their goals answered. The control factor is hard for SART players to adapt to. Well, I mean, Flipside are all SART players, and they love to control the ball. Look at this. Marquis just controlling the ball, going for a deliberate, very deliberate hit out of defense to his teammate. Should, should have scored, and it would have been a great goal. Uh, and that's all off the back of just keeping control of the ball. And I see now Dadu is doing the same thing. Just pushing it out of defense, going for a fake, going for a 50-50, instead of just soft clearing it and losing possession immediately. Do you remember where you and Findable Carpet met? I do actually. I was just like, look, I was scrolling down on Twitch one night because I was bored and I wanted to go and get in a viewer game or something in somebody else's stream. And at this point, I maybe had like 50 followers on Twitch. Like, and nobody watched me. Nobody knew who I was. Maybe in like 30 followers. I don't know. I was my stream was non-existent, and nobody knew who I was. Didn't I? Didn't even know Marky at this point actually. And. Uh, I found some girl called Grey Highlighter, and I was like, yeah, she, she, her and her Discord group, they seem pretty chill. Oh, please. So close. Uh, so I just hopped in Discord with them, and I was playing some games, then this dude, Findable Carpet, came in, and he, used, he just did the same thing I did. He just, like, came to chill in somebody else's stream. So that's where we met each other. And yeah, we he told me he was a streamer, and I told him that I was a streamer as well. That we're that we both are, you know, starting to stream. So we give each other a follow, started hanging out in each other's chats a little bit. Actually, just to let you guys know, if you ever see the trail of the ball change colors, that shows you which color team touched it last. So if you notice the trail that ball, you know the ball trail thing, like the carpet just mentioned. Marky didn't know that that was a thing until he was like level sixty on his on his. PC account. He has a level. He has a PlayStation account over level 50. PC account at level 60. Then one day he just realizes, oh, the ball's changing color based on the last team that hit it. I thought it was to do with speed or something. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't know until like the longest time. So so close. I, and I love it. I love that it's it's not a blowout or anything. I mean, it, on paper it might look at it like that at the end, but if you're Garrett, watching the games, this is so the shaft with hashtags, fella. Very quick. Not Who what's the shaft with hashtags? I don't get it. On the for very long. Really is, you're, are you you're not Garrett G, are you? Garrett the Canuck, Canuck. Are you Garrett G or is it a separate Garrett? A different Garrett. If you give them more than two seconds to take a shot, it's going to be perfectly on target. But Flipside has had some shots that they probably really should have been... Yeah, I feel like me and Carpet have pretty good chemistry. And we love to talk about the game. So, I mean, when you when you love to talk to someone about the game and about metagame and about strategy, it makes it very easy for you to cast together because you can just, you know, transition very easily into a post-game discussion, which is what Leaf and Carpet are doing right now. Get them psyched out. Yeah, Mark was genuinely serious. He didn't know. Mark did not know what that um, bell trail color was. Jack, did you know this? <laughs> yeah, this is what I heard, Cucks. I heard this. He's like roping in Jack. Jack, did you know this? And Jack's like, yeah. Yeah, of course I knew that. Everybody knows that. 
away with a point. That's amazing. He's such a special boy. What a play by Cux, what a fake. <laughs> oh, Marky getting bumped right there. I know, who would have thought that me and Carpet, Car, Car Parts, it's Carpets, <laughs> me and Findable Carpet would be where we are. I know, right? When I bumped into him in some other girl's stream, well, I should say some girl's stream, not some other girl, me being a dude. Uh, so when I bumped into Carpet the first time we met, like, he didn't he didn't have his PPL league. I didn't know anyone, I had no connections at all in the Rocket League scene. And now we're both pretty well known and pretty well connected. And I'm very happy for him as well, I think he absolutely deserves all the success and the credit that he's getting for his casting. Because he's, he's a natural. He just looks... he looks legit, if you know what I mean. Oh! <laughs> That's not a redirect, though. Uh, it probably is, actually. Yeah, it's not a deliberate pass. That is a redirect. There you go. Uh, they play five games because it's a league. It's like a group stage. And, like, winning one game can be the difference between qualifying and not qualifying. This, the, that sort of position where you have two players in the corner and the other player will hang him back in midfield. Like right there we saw Mike and Cux in the corner. Marky in midfield. Marky will be very, very scared to go in. Like to move in and attack that ball because of... Um, because of how risky it is. If both your teammates are in the opposition team's corner and the ball gets centered, it's very risky to go in for it because if it gets cleared, you're gonna get you're gonna lose a goal in a counter attack. Good pass, well done. But I mean, when it's a tap in like this, you can kind of just go for it. And nobody at this point is making a hard clear for because the ball's hardly moving. Nobody's hard clearing that. Cuck's gonna just go in. Shalthus looks like the most legit caster. I think both of us know that's not true. Like um. All the guys who are who are there right now, they all look pretty comfortable and they all look pretty legit. But I mean, I don't know, Carpet just looks like that's what he does, if you know what I mean. It actually just looks like that's his job. Even though it's the first time that he's casted for anything in person. <laughs> what? How did that not go in? Alright, later chopped. Hey, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, dude. Are you doing thingamy, uh, with me tomorrow? Or, or are you done? I'll message you. One timer. I'm not going to use hockey phrases. I don't know hockey. <laughs> I don't know hockey. Oh, yeah. Chopped is getting his wisdom teeth filled. Lamau. Safe spoon. <laughs> Safe spoon chopped. Safe spoon. What a shot. Well done. Is this about to be a 5 0 series? Yep. I mean, that's what I would have expected. Because PZ are not playing very well. And Flipside just 4 1 Kapow right before this, so I don't know why nobody predicted a 5 0 Flipside. I would have predicted a 5 0 Flipside. I saw the result before I, uh, before I watched this series, but I mean, I would have predicted that 5-0. I absolutely would have. Oh! What a save. 
happening more often than they actually are right now. Ooh, Marky almost pushing one in, but Tequilas keeps that out. Let's see if they can move on to the attack as Cooks here gets some boost. Passes that right out to Mike. <laughs> shot on net. Sick and Philly whiff in the midfield. Closes out on that as Cooks here gets it. Mike rules waiting to see if he can challenge to do. Oh, they did 3 2 Kapow. You're right. You're, you're right. They did. Sorry, my bad. But either way, they looked good against Kapow. Flipside looked good. Did they 3 2 them? Yeah, they did. Flipside beat Kapow 3 2, but they looked good. And PZ are not performing very well in the groups. And they're not on the same level. Like, I don't know why certain teams, like Supersonic Avengers have dropped a series 4-1 to PZ and Kapow dropped a series to PZ. I don't know why teams struggle so much with PZ, because my team have always been pretty close to them. Me, Scrub, and Flarky before I benched myself in favor of uh, Bipod. Even like Witty Flarky and Scrub took more games off PZ than PZ did off them. So I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird one. I don't know why teams struggle against PZ. I don't really rate them. They're solid. They're like a solid team. They're just another one of the long list of teams in EU who are really, really solid, but they're nothing special. Am I playing any Rocket League tonight? Not on stream. I might play some after I'm done watching these games. I'm going to watch all the games, so I've got another, like, hour and 40 minutes to go. Well, I mean, some of that will be, like, skipped, so maybe an hour and a half more watching games. They played very strong. Every single game was one point for the first three, then two points, and then finally three points. It seemed to slowly ramp up. But again, you just get mentally exhausted dealing with a team like this. They, a flip side can keep that pressure on, keep those shots, and it's just so hard to keep that up for five whole games. Yeah, and again, not on paper. People are going to look at the 5-0, but it was close. I recommend, if you didn't see them all, go back and watch them all. Precision Z did a very, very good job. Of keeping up to flip I'll I'll check out go over the Doc Emric. Right so All right. I'll, I'll, I'll open that in another tab. There we go. I'll look at that later. Back at the desk, Scott Cole along with James and Wave. Flipside has won eight straight games. <laughs> the first team, the group stage, to reach 20 wins. Yeah, they are on the fast track to becoming the number one team in the groups right now. Wait, really they've won eight straight games. As Carpet said. Those first three games Did they? were one goal games, but mm -hmm. interestingly, in the entire series, Precision Z never... Were Kapow 2-0 up against, up against Flipside? I don't think they were. I don't think they were. Very, very close games going off, and I was, I was happy to see Precision Z warming up as the series went on. The very beginning we had 0-0, zero, zero, one goal... IBP's biggest problems, uh, going for low percentage plays in attack, panicking in defense and not controlling the ball, not controlling a possession, rather. Um, which are, are both like, they're both aspects of bad rotation, really. I honestly felt like Cookser stepped it up big time. You see, he gets that pass right off Marky, who actually passes to himself, gets it off the backboard again. Cooks was there. He was so good on the rebounds this game. They scored 16 goals this series. Ten of those involved Cookser in some ways, seven of which were he scored by himself. This man was on fire. Yeah, Cooks Cooks played really well in these series. He played really, really well. He he was kind of quiet actually, and you see again, Cooks here on the rebound. James Bond looks like the Aussie bloke. Of the series for me. Yeah, James has a really good Australian impression. That thing was absolutely insane. Marky had no goal goals up to this point. And then he busts out this air dribble. <laughs> yeah, Marky had a really, really quiet series until this moment. Like he really didn't do much and then that happened. And you're like, oh. And guess what? The following game, he got a hat trick. So and then see, this is what Marky this is something I think it's a, a flaw in his mentality because until he can do something good, he doesn't play at his usual high level he's kind of just like you know not that impactful and he probably feels like he's not playing very well and he's saying stuff in the comms like oh i'm not playing very well and oh, i'm not doing i'm not doing great i'm not having a good game then he'll do something great and suddenly the, just like that he he's fine and he plays well but um i don't know i feel like marky can definitely just be more consistent if he changes up his mentality a little bit.